Hey folks, uh, Praveen here. Uh, welcome to a new session. Uh, in this session, uh, we welcome to you from Praveen and from Cloudix Lab. I welcome to your new session on histograms with OpenCV. Uh, so we will study OpenCV histograms. So histograms are a very useful way of seeing how colors are distributed in a picture. So we have distribution of colors in a picture. We'll see that more in detail. Now it's useful if you want to understand the contrast, the brightness, and the intensity distribution of a picture. Uh, the histograms are a great way of doing it. OpenCV gives us a bunch of tools to let us study these uh, these distributions very clearly. So we will see more and more of it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, let let me just first do the basics. And then we'll jump into what's called grayscale histograms. So we'll take grayscale images and study it. Okay. So the picture we'll be using right now is this picture with a picture with uh, a picture that looks like this. So you see this, this picture has extremely strong colors. Uh, very few times are the colors mixing. They're quite unique. Uh, and we will see how it looks like in that analysis. Uh, we're going to first convert to a grayscale. And uh, next, what we're going to do is we're going to create a histogram. So the way, uh, so I'll just, the, the, so CV2 again has a nice little function that can help you create a histogram very easily. Uh, and what are the inputs to the histogram? The inputs to the histogram is one, the image, uh, the number of channels. So again, this, this is a, a grayscale image. So we just have one channel. Masks, uh, most of examples we'll be using, we won't be using any masks, so there are no masks. Uh, the number of bins, so we will use all 256 pins because the value, we can have values from zero to 255. So we're just gonna, we'll basically keep a bin for every different pixel value. We won't do any bunching. And the last section we is gonna specify the min and max in any particular bin, which can be again from zero to 256. Okay, uh, the rest of it is just setting up the picture, the title, the bins, uh, and the limits, and then as we, See it, we can see, we see the uh, picture here. Uh, so what we have is we see a bunch of, 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 a lot of dark pixels over here, okay? And that's what we see. We see a lot of dark pixels in this image. Uh, so this is how this histogram looks like. Now let's take a different picture, okay? We will take the picture of an older picture which we did, which is the rainbow picture. You remember this picture? This is a more realistic picture, uh, which has a distribution of different colors and the colors are kind of mixing with each other also. Uh, we make a black and white of it. And then we plot the histogram. So the histogram is a little more centered because see, well, we have a, a, a more distributed form of pictures. We don't see any strong colors on either side. They're kind of in the middle, nice and sweet. Okay, so different kind of pictures will have different uh, types of histogram distributions. So you can often use these histogram distributions to often uh, to, uh, to identify characteristics or signatures of certain pictures also. Okay, now what we'll do is uh, we will do look at the color histograms. Okay, so, you, so we looked at, uh, so what is color histograms? It's very simple. We just were looking at a single channel. Now we'll be looking at, uh, we'll be looking at uh, each channel separately. Last time we just flattened all of it to a simple grayscale image. Now we will look at each of them separately, the, the red, the green, and the blue. And we will use a function which we'd seen before in the previous chapter called cv2.split that helped us uh, split any picture into its individual channels. So it'll be BGR. So we have again read a picture. We're going to read a rainbow art picture. Uh, and we're going to see uh, split it against BGR. And we will uh, look, okay, so again, so what we're gonna do is we're creating a for function. Let's just run it so that you first can see what it looks like. So we're gonna create the picture and we're gonna plot it. We're gonna plot all three of them together. So first we have our very strong picture with strong, uh, with the strong blues and the strong reds. And as you can see, that we have a very a, a very clear picture that in certain areas we have very low values of those colors or very strong values of those colors. And we have a picture that looks like the same. Okay, yeah. Now let's look at how this, uh, 
pixel value looks if we took the other other picture, our, our normal picture, the normal rainbow picture. You can see it's more distributed. It's it's kind of you have you have a uh, we have lots of uh, points in the center and not so many in the in the, in the sides uh, we see a few we see uh, two little spikes with blue uh, we see there's a lot of zero blues though which probably correspond because there are a lot of uh, or low values of blues because they are all across um, and maybe and there are some stronger values of blue uh, corresponding to the uh, the sky images the greens are kind of we just have one little peak here and uh this is a, and the red so this this is basically saying there's a lot of since we have a lot of whites and a lot of grays we see a lot of we see this this picture to be a nice little mixed okay one other way of looking at uh, histograms is now we can even look at the uh, we can look at how the colors are kind of mix with each other certain pixels have uh, whether they have shared colors okay uh, so one like for example uh, so we'll be comparing two colors together so if you want to see how many pixels of value of say red and blue we or red and blue uh red and blue red of a certain value and blue of a certain value we can uh, see that okay so we'll first take our nicer picture okay so what we're doing is again we are splitting it up into different channels and we are creating different different histograms they're creating so um so we are, we are right now taking two channels okay so right now we are taking the g and b so the the b is the first one so you have channel zero is in b uh, g is second uh, and so we have in channel one uh, these are the two channels we are taking yeah we're suspecting zero and one we have zero masks uh, right now we are just using 32 bins okay earlier we were taking uh, we we took 256 bins if you do now we are working with two channels and if we took 256 256 bins for both of them we'll have a lot of data so we reduce the amount of data we're just going to take 32 bins uh, and uh, but in each bin the values the min values stay zero and the max value stays 256 so, so this is for the uh, first uh, the first one which is uh, g and this one corresponds to the one for blue Okay, and we're gonna put that, and uh, we're just gonna set an histogram, and this is sets for the G and B histogram, etc. So similarly, we also do it for G and R, so it's green and red, and blue and R, and we can then see how the picture looks. Okay, so this is how the picture looks. So in this picture, what we see is that there are certain uh, regions where we see nice mixes of say G and B and G and R. Uh, we, there are these regions where those both the colors kind of get used and redistributions. Now let's look at how the same pictures look with on a rainbow art, the one with very strong picture, with, with very strong colors. So what we notice is we really can't see if there aren't many regions where say G and B come together or G and R come together. You can see some kind of pictures where blue and red kind of are mixing. You see something, see something light here. So you see, the, both of these pictures have have extremely different signatures. So this picture is not sharing many pixels. If there is a pixel value, it's usually a strong red, a strong green, a strong blue. There is no mixing. There's not much mixing. So that we can see again in the 2D histogram. Uh, we can also do the same thing with 3D histograms. So in the 3D histogram, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the number of bins to eight. This is going to use eight bins. We're going to use same use the histogram function uh, to do that. Okay, and what I have is I have this function that kind of uh, plots. Uh, I'm going to I'm use this thing called Axis 3D. It's a uh, it's a it's a function available in in uh, Matplotlib to plot 3D graphs. So which is going to see how it looks. So when I take my strong picture, as you can see, it gets very strong colors, strong blues, strong reds, strong greens, and there's very little mixing of colors. This is also we can see in a 3D picture. And uh, if I if I had done this for my my nice sweet mixed picture, you 
there is more distribution. They're kind of more centered. And I have points where reds, greens, and blues kind of come together. There are some strong blues. There are lots of blacks, a lot of grays. Uh, so this is the kind of, uh, it's, it's again, as, as I'm showing you, these different pictures can have different distributions. Uh, the next picture we're going to look at is the concept of histogram equalization. So in histogram equalization can kind of improve the contrast of an image by stretching the distribution of pixels. So it kind of, kind of forces it to kind of bunch together. And uh, what it does, it ends up looking, improving the, uh, the contrast of a global contrast of a picture. Uh, can it's rarely used for your life pictures can and it, it can be useful for some specialized form of pictures like medical images or satellite images so i'll just show you how it looks on like the rainbow art picture we have uh, so there's a very simple function called equalizest and uh, yeah it kind of makes it a little stronger So what this picture is doing, as I can see, it's kind of uh, pulling, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's kind of forcing pixels to go into certain directions and therefore sharpens the contrast. That is what's happened here. If you see the rainbow, let's look at the rainbow image and it looks. So as you can see in this picture, right? I mean, it's it's a little more the contrast. We've, it's kind of pushed the pushed uh, the values away from each other, and therefore highlights the contrast. This picture and this picture, uh, the contrast the contrasts are more highlighted now. And the grayscale image is also kind of you can see it's kind of pushing uh, that it's the the colors that are the pixel values are trying to go into a certain region uh, in a more clearer way. We start kind of having more zeros now as a result because it's trying to kind of trying to push yourself to black and white in some ways trying to push it to, to each other okay now we've uh, done uh, now the last we're going to look at is histogram with masks so you could do histogram with mask in case you don't want to apply the histogram across the entire area but you're interested in a very niche area then you could use masks so you could use some of the same functions so we will see an application of histogram with masks in this section. The picture we're gonna use is a rainbow image. And we will also create a, a mask. Okay, this is our... So this is the picture we're gonna take and we're gonna plot the histogram of the image. We have seen this again, it's a nice sweeping distribution. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a mask. Uh, and now we're gonna create a little mask in this, in, this, in this particular region, which corresponds to, let's look at what this mask highlights. So this mask highlights that person, the person we had before. Uh, and essentially the strongest color you can see is red. And so if I plot the histogram, you can see the red is the strongest color in this particular picture. There's a lot of red. There's some black also, which that are kind of spikes over here, where all the values are kind of, there are a lot of values at zero, and there's a lot of values at red. Okay, so this is one way in which you could use histograms to kind of build signatures for your pictures. Uh, you can also histograms to highlight contrast in certain regions and understand your pictures better. Okay, so that's it for today. And let's stop.